Uh, welcome to our second online lecture number two. Um, this is all about uh, titrations. And we will be using a lot of uh, the information that you, you learned in um, the buffer lecture, um, as well as continuing to use that information that we um, learned in chapter 14. Kind of the final goal of all of our calculations will be to come up with the pH at different points in the acid um, base titration. Uh, titration is the method used to determine the amount of acid um, or base in solution. Um, the progress of a titration um, can be monitored by plotting the pH of the solution as a function of the titrant that is added. And this is where we come up um, with our different pH um, curves. And there are three types of curves that we will look at um, in class as a review of um, titration. Um, and hopefully we'll even be able to do a titration um, using our um, pH meter so that we can monitor um, the pH as we add our titrant in. Um, there are three types of um, titrations. Um, the first one we're going to look at, um, I pretty much can guarantee you will not be on the AP exam. It will not be on um, our assessment because it's the really, really easy one. Um, it's a strong acid, um, strong base uh, titration. Um, and this one, um, like all titrations, always goes um, to completion where you have used up all of your hydrogen ions and your hydroxide ions. Uh, the net ionic equation of a strong acid, strong base titration is always the same. It's always the hydrogen ions plus the hydroxide ions um, um, yields uh, liquid water. Now, as you're working through the titration, um, there are a couple things to um, keep in mind. Um, to determine the pH or the hydrogen ion concentration at any point during this uh, titration, uh, the amount of hydrogen ions, or the present, um, must be divided by the total volume of the solution. Notice I have that in red. That's really important. Um, we're changing up a little bit how we've worked before. We've never had to add the volumes together in any of the previous problems that we've worked. But in this chapter, total volume is really, really important. So you're always going to take however much acid you started with, with how many milliliters, and add that to um, the milliliters of base um, that you've added. So you always have a new volume, so you always have to recalculate um, molarity in these problems. Um, so let's look at um, some components of a um, strong acid, uh, strong base titration that we need to keep track of. Um, first off, we're going to work in a different unit. Um, we're not going to use um, moles on um, our BCA chart. Uh, what we're going to use instead is millimoles. And this is actually a little bit easier to work with um, because we're going to be dealing with bigger numbers. If we would go out to moles, we'd have these really small decimals that we'd have to deal with. Uh, whoops. Okay, a little trouble here. Uh, a millimole is a thousandth of a mole. And really, this stuff up here, the one millimole and the um, the molarity part is pretty cool because molarity, you can, we know it's equal to moles over liters. Um, but here is actually another way to calculate, and we'll be using this a lot, um, this millimoles of um, solute over milliliters of solution. Um, this kind of gets rid of us having to convert um, liters into milliliters and then milliliters back, you know, back and forth um, into liters, all back and doing all that back and forth um, work because now we have a way to calculate molarity based on having millimoles and um, milliliters. Um, the calculation that's in green there, that's the one that's going to be really useful to us as we're going through and doing our titration um, problems. The number of millimoles is equal to the volume in milliliters. Uh, times the molarity. And when we are talking about um, 
titrations. There are a couple of important places where we want to note what the pH is. And one of the places is before the equivalence point. And before the equivalence point, our pH um, will be based on our hydrogen ions. Um, and so once we have the millimoles of hydrogen that are left, divided by the total volume of solution in milliliters, we'll get the concentration and we can calculate the pH. So we're always curious about what's happening to the pH before the equivalence point. Um, in every titration, we're also really curious about what is the pH at the equivalence point. Well, for this strong, strong situation, whenever we're taking a strong acid and reacting it with a strong base, um, the pH is 7. Uh, that's not true for the other titrations that we will be looking at. But what I want you to do note that something that will be true at the equivalence point, no matter what kind of titration we're doing, this right here is always going to be true. Our hydrogen is always going to equal our hydroxide, no matter what kind of titration we're doing. It just so happens on the strong, strong, we end up at 7, we end up at neutral. And then we're always curious um, after the equivalence point, um, what's happening with the pH. Well, if you're doing a strong acid being titrated with a strong base, you're adding the strong base in. Once you go past that equivalence point, all your hydrogen has been used up. And now you're just continuing to add more and more hydroxide. So your pH will be based off of your hydroxide ion concentration um, at the end. Um, so you can come up with your hydroxide ion concentration. And then if you, you know, there, remember there's a couple different ways to go about the end of this problem. You could, if you have the hydroxide, you could calculate the pOH and then go to the pH. Um, you could also calculate the hydrogen ions um, using the Kw equation. So there are a couple different ways um, that you can go about this. Um, so let's look at a problem. Um, we have the titration of 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar nitric acid with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And we want to calculate um, the pH at these different intervals. Um, we want to calculate it before we've added any sodium hydroxide in, when we've added 20 milliliters, 100 milliliters, and 200 um, milliliters. Now, the first thing that's really critical no matter you know what problem you're working is let's look at these acids and bases what kind of acids and bases do we have here here we have our strong acid and here we have our strong base um, because it's a strong acid being titrated with a strong base we automatically know the pH is going to be 7 at the um, equivalence point now, in terms of working this problem, it is very similar to the buffer problems. Um, first thing I always want you to do, what's the chemistry uh, that's going on in the particular problem? Um, second thing, um, we have a base. We have an acid. We are taking our base and combining it with our acid, so we're back to... BCA. Now one thing to note with our BCA, we're going to be using millimoles on those instead of moles. And then the last part, um, now this is really kind of dependent on uh, what kind of problem you're working with. Um, if it's strong, strong, you wouldn't do an ice chart. You wouldn't do Henderson-Hasselbach that we used before. But the majority of our problems are going to be weak, so just make yourself a note that we're going to ice it, or um, we can use that Henderson-Hasselbach um, equation again. Um, that third step is really dependent on where you are in the titration, so you have to be real careful um, with that. Um, please remind me in next time I see you in class, and I will show you the titration curve for uh, this, and we'll note the important places along the titration curve. Um, so let's try our uh, strong, strong, and to start off, um, let's just rewrite down what we have here. So we're going to do a strong, strong, and we have 
um, 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar nitric. And we're also going to be putting in varying volumes of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Um, labeling will be your friend. It'll help you keep organized. So let's look at at zero milliliters of sodium hydroxide. What would the pH be? So this means we don't have any base in there. We only have our acid. It's a strong acid. We remember that strong acids have a one-way arrow. It's going to completely dissociate. Um, we also remember if this is 0.2 molar, it's a one-to-one -one ratio across, so this is 0.2 uh, molar. And so this is actually a pretty easy problem. All we're going to have to do on this one um, is just take the negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration. pH equals the negative log of our 0.2. pH equals 0.699 at 0 milliliters hydroxide added. So before we do anything, um, the pH of our strong acid in this particular case is 0.699 um, for uh, its pH. So now let's look at what happens when we start adding in. We start the titration, so we start adding in um, our base. So let's look at 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydroxide. Now notice how I wrote this. I actually set this up so I can go ahead and do my um, millimole calculation right here um, at the very beginning. And so 20 times 0.1, that tells me I'm going to add in 2 millimoles of hydroxide. Um, up here at the top, let's go back and figure out how many millimoles of nitric acid we're starting with. 50 times 0.2. We have here 10 millimoles of our acid um, component. Now, this is the point where now we're going to add our base. Our base is going to start combining with our acid. So that immediately means we got to start the BCA chart. So we have our base, we're going to combine it with our acid, and this always gives us water. They're strong, strong, so notice the arrow, it's not going to go both ways. Do our BCA chart. Um, we're starting with 2 millimoles of hydroxide. We calculated up above that we had 10 millimoles of hydrogen and once again we don't even care about the water. Um, just like in our last unit um, with buffers the change is exactly the same. We always change by the smallest. So let's write that in. Change by smallest moles or in this case uh, millimoles. Well, our hydroxide is smaller, so we'll do minus 2 and minus 2. That's going to use up all of our hydroxide, and that's going to leave us with 8 millimoles of our acid. So our pH at this point, is we're before the equivalence point, uh, our pH is going to be based on our hydrogen ion. Now here is the new part of this problem. We do have to determine this new molarity. And we're going to use milliliters for it. Now this is a new volume here. And to calculate this new volume, it is equal to the two volumes that we've added together. So we added 20 milliliters of our base to our 50 milliliters of our acid. So our new volume in this problem 
is 70 milliliters. So what we did once again is we, these are additive. The volume's going to change because we're taking have our 50 milliliters of acid and now we're going to add an additional 20 milliliters of base so that ends up with a new volume at the beginning that's going to change the concentrations that we have um, we can work in milli millimole over milliliter um, 8 divided by 70 gives us 0.11 molar um, hydrogen ions um, since all that is left is our hydrogen ions, that means we can immediately take this to pH equals the negative log of 0.11 pH equals 0.96 at 20 milliliters of hydroxide added in. So here we'll mark this. This was our pH before we added anything in. This is our pH once we've added in 20 milliliters um, of our base. And notice it's doing what it should be doing. It should be working its way out of the acidic pH, is working our way towards neutral and eventually um, basic. Um, so the next point, the next interval that we want to look at in our titration is we want to look at if we add in 100 milliliters um, of our 0.1 molar base. So we're going to be at 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar. I'm going to go ahead and set up my millimole problem right here. That means I have 10 millimoles of hydroxide. Once again, we're taking our base, combining it with our acids. So let's look at our equation. And it's base combining with acid. So we need to start off with our BCA. Now you'll notice. Um, our hydrogen ion, our initial amount that we have before the reaction takes place, is going to remain the same. So every time here on hydrogen, for each of these problems, we're going to start with our 10 millimoles. That comes from the initial amount of acid that we have. Um, now we have 10 millimoles of hydroxide. The change is still by the smallest. And this is interesting. We have zero and zero. We are at a point, an important point in our titration. We are at the equivalence point. We have reached the point where our hydrogen equals our hydroxide. And whenever you find that the hydrogen equals the hydroxide, that means we are at the equivalence point. And because this is a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH is automatically 7 um, with the addition of 100 milliliters. 100 milliliters of hydroxide added in. Um, so this is a nice problem because that's really easy there um, for the equivalence point. So here we're at 7. Now, we want to add more base in. Well, any more base that's added in is going to be excess base. And so now we're going to see our pH um, dramatically change into the basic um, pHs that we have. So now we are at uh, 200 milliliters of 0.1 molar. That's going to give us 20 millimoles of hydroxide. Once again, same thing. It's still a base is combining with our acid, BCA. Um, the hydrogen ions, because it's from that initial addition, it's still going to be 10. Our hydroxide is 20. And now we're still going to change by the smallest, just like we did in buffers. So we have 
minus 10, minus 10. That gives us 10 millimoles of hydroxide left, and we don't have any hydrogen. Now, just like we did at the beginning of the very first problem, no, sorry, at the 20 milliliters when we had to come up with a new molarity, we're going to have to find a new molarity here. And in order to find a new molarity, we're going to need that new volume. So we initially had 50 milliliters of acid. And we just added in 200 uh, milliliters of our uh, base. So now we're going to take our 10 millimoles and we have 250 milliliters that it's actually in. So you got to be, this is a critical step on that, you know, when you're down to the final part of your BCA, when you're at the after the stoichiometry has occurred, you're always going to have to add those volumes together, the volume of the acid and added to the volume of the base in order to calculate a new molarity. In this particular problem, we take 10 divided by 250. We come up with 0 0.040 molar for our hydroxide. Um, now, there are a couple of you know, ways to take this problem from here. I think the easiest thing is to find the POH first. The POH is um, 1.40 and then subtract that from 14 to come up with our pH which is 12.60 at 200 milliliters hydroxide added in. So we have definitely zoomed right into those um, basic um, pHs. Um, so that, this is essentially what's going to happen in each of the problems that we're going to work. Um, what's going to happen as we move into weak, strong combinations um, is that in our, after we do our BCA chart, we're going to have to do some ice um, as well. Um, so let's start looking at some weak acid, um, strong um, base titrations. Um, in every titration that we do, um, it always comes to completion. So even a weak acid will react completely with a strong base, and even a weak base will react completely with a strong acid. Um, so these go to completion, so that BCA has to be um, completed first. Now, got to be careful because we are using a weak acid you got to watch out because there's going to be some ice problems anytime you have a weak component left um, ice is going to become important now you may find that sometimes you can substitute your ice problem and your small k problems for a henderson hassel box so that could be um, potential uh, potential shortcuts for you um, this is just kind of a good fact um, to know. Uh, the pH of the equivalence point of the weak acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base titration will always be greater than 7. Um, a kind of a way to remember this, what the pH is at the equivalence point. When you look at the weak acid, strong base, circle the strong component. And that's going to tell you where the pH will be at the equivalence point. So since this is a strong base, the pH at equivalence has to be in the basic range. Also important to know the equivalence point is not is defined by the stoichiometry, not the pH. So you can't let look at pH and know if you're at, at the equivalence point. You actually have to do the stoichiometry and see, um, do, does my hydrogen equal my hydroxide? Whenever that's true, um, you are at the equivalence point. 
Um, now, something we didn't talk about with the last one, because it's not as interesting, um, is in a weak acid um, strong base um, titration, um, the weak acid will equal the A minus. Remember, this is the aha from before. So halfway to the equivalence point, the weak acid will equal the A minus. Something cool happens here. When the HA equals the A minus, the pH equals the pKa. So at the halfway to the equivalence point, there's kind of a shortcut for working through um, the problems. And as we work an example, um, I'll show you that. Um, it is the amount of acid, not its strength, that determines the um, equivalence point. Once again, we're looking for our moles of hydroxide to equal our moles of hy uh, hydrogen. Um, the pH value at the equivalence point is affected by the acid strength. The weaker the acid we begin with, the more basic that pH will become. So one final slide, and then we'll um, do a little practice here. Um, these are um, basically two-step problems. Um, the very first thing you want to do is, well, actually, three-step. I should add that in because I always want you to first, what's the chemistry that's happening? Think about that balanced equation. Then, second, um, the, when the base combines with the acid, work with the BCA. And then finally, there's some type of equilibrium problem that has to occur here. Um, it could be an ice and a small k that needs to be done. Um, or our good friend Henderson Hasselbach, whenever we have, aha. So we'll watch out for that as well, because that can make our problems a little bit um, faster to work. Um, so let's try a weak acid, strong base titration. Um, we're going to take uh, 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid. And we're going to react it with the strong base, um, sodium hydroxide. And we have four intervals that we want to calculate the pH at. 0, 25, 50, and 75 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Um, I've also posted the uh, Ka value there for you because we do have a weak acid. And once again, back in class, I'll show you um, the titration curve. So we kind of do a little bit of review of titration in class. Um, so let's... Give this problem a try. Um, so to um, start off with, um, we are going to look at zero milliliters of sodium hydroxide added in. So there's no sodium hydroxide here. The only thing that is um, present is our weak acid, and our weak acid was acetic acid. And we will dissociate it. Notice the arrow going both directions because it is weak. And since the only thing we have here is weak, that automatically means ice needs to occur. We have 0.1 molar um, acetic acid and none of these. And just in case anybody has, you know, fallen asleep at this point, you know, like John, it might be a, a good time uh, to wake up and notice um, that these are exactly like the other problems we've done. You can probably, yeah, John, do these in your sleep right now. Minus X, plus X, and plus X. Uh, 0.1 minus x, x, and x. Nothing new on this particular um, problem. Um, our Ka value was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. 
Um, so that means we can ignore our change in the reactant, write our equilibrium expression, and then um, we're ready to plug in. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared over 0.1. Multiply by the 0.1 first, and then take the square root of this, and you get 0 0.0013 molar equals x. And just like before, I want you to say, what is x? And x is our hydrogen ions. Since it's our hydrogen ions, we can add, automatically take um, the pH of this. Um, I'm not going to show that work. I think you can do this on your own. The pH is 2.89 at 0 milliliters of hydroxide added in. Makes sense. It shouldn't be anywhere near the pH um, of the nitric acid in our last one, so it's definitely going to be, you know, up there in that three range. So this is where our pH is starting. We should only see it go up from here as we add our base in. So let's go ahead and look at now. Let's add in some base into this. Let's add 25 milliliters of point, uh, 0.1 molar of our hydroxide. And notice I'm setting that problem up again to go ahead and get my millimoles determined. And we have 2.5 millimoles of hydroxide. Um, now, we've add, we're adding in our base. Our base is combining with our acid. The very first thing is we've got to think about that chemistry. Our base is combining with our acid. Um, the base is going to gain a hydrogen ion and become water. And that's going to leave us with our conjugate base over here, acetate. And something really critical to see um, in this particular problem is here we have our HA. Is there any place in this problem that we have the conjugate base? We have the A minus, so the, the acid molecule minus the hydrogen. Right over here we've got our A minus. And that's kind of curious and kind of want to keep track of that. Um, because that means if we have these components left, we have a buffer system, and we can use our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So I always like to mark my HA and my A minus, so I know if I have aha to use at a late point. So we got our BCA here. Oh, let's go back, and we need to think about um, how many millimoles of um, acetic acid we're adding in. Um, we initially started with 50 milliliters of, I believe it was 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So we have 5 millimoles of our acid. So we're going to put 5 millimoles of our acid, 2.5 millimoles of our base, and nothing over there. The change is always the same. We always change by the smallest, so minus 2.5, minus 2.5. And now we do have something over here that we're going to create that's important, plus 2.5. That uses up all of our base. We have 2.5 millimoles of our weak acid left and 2.5 millimoles of our um, weak base. And we're actually at a critical juncture here. We have our HA, we have our 
a minus. And if we wanted to, we could use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. We have the components of aha. But there's something actually neater going on in this problem. Notice, does our HA equal our A minus? Yeah, it does. HA equals A minus. Whenever our HA equals our A minus, the pH equals our pKa, and we are at a very specific point um, in our titration. We are at the halfway point to equivalence. So, in order to determine the pH of this, all you need to do is take the negative log of the Ka. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The pH is 4.74 at 25 milliliters added in of our strong component. I noticed pH went up quite a bit with just a little bit of our um, strong base added in. And once again, this is um, a shortcut method through this problem. If you wanted to, you could go through and you could work a nice problem if you wanted to. You could do Henderson-Hasselbalch if you wanted to. But because our weak acid equals our conjugate base, there's a little bit of a shortcut that we can take in order to get through this problem. Now, the next place that we're going to be looking at is we want to take it up to 50 milliliters. Oh, whoops, let's head back one and let me add in a slide here. Actually, I think we'll see if we can get two added in. Double check and make sure we got it set right. Okay. So now let's add in um, at uh, 50 milliliters. So we have 50 milliliters of our 0.1 molar. That gives us 5 millimoles of hydroxide. And so, first thing, we already know our chemistry that's happening. We've got our hydroxide plus our weak acid gives us water and our conjugate base. So, once again, I'm going to mark here. I've got my HA. Over here, I've got my A-. And... Uh, we have we do our BCA, base combines with acid. We have five millimoles of our hydroxide. Um, we know we have five millimoles of our weak acid and none of our conjugate base. Change by the smallest. And now we've got zero of our hydroxide and we've got zero of our base. In this particular case, we are now at the equivalence point. And the reason that we are at our equivalence point um, is because our hydrogen is equaling our hydroxide. That puts us at our um, equivalence point. So now we're going to go ahead. We still have some of our conjugate base at out there. This is not going to be a Henderson-Hasselbach because we don't have any HA left. So this is kind of where we go back to that strong acid, strong base titration. Um, our pH is going to be based off of how much conjugate base we have present. Um, we need to come up with a new molarity for this, and a new molarity will require us um, to have a new volume. We have 50 milliliters of our acid plus 50 milliliters of our base. 
So this is now in 100 milliliters of solution. And that makes our new molarity of our weak acid. We have 0 0.05 molar of our A minus, our conjugate base. Now, something we have to be careful of here. Um, this is our conjugate base. This is our A minus. And it's weak. And weak always equals ice. So the next thing that's up is weak equals ice. And we're going to start with our conjugate base because that's the only thing we have to work with. That's the only thing left in solution. And remember, anytime we have a weak base, we always react it with water. That's going to produce our conjugate acid and hydroxide. Got an ice chart we need to create. We have 0 0.05 molar acetate. Um, none of that and none of that. Now, let's go ahead and highlight here. Let's just remind ourselves, this is our A minus. And that's our HA. Uh, we're going to change by minus X plus x and plus x, 0 0.05 minus x, x and x. Now, this is where you really have to be thinking, concentrating, taking your time. This is a weak base problem. This is going to be a KB expression, not a KA. So our KB equals our conjugate acid, our hydroxide, all over our um, weak base. And you're going to have to do a little work here because we don't have a KB um, for our conjugate base acetate. Um, we have our Ka, and if you remember from our last chapter, last part of the chapter with buffers, we had this equation, Ka times Kb equals Kw. Um, we'll be able to use that again in order for us to come up with our Kb. So our Kb is going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th over 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th. And that gives us, for our Kb, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And I'm running a little low on space here, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide and do our plug-in. If you have space, just keep continuing. So plugging in, we have 5.6 times 10 to the negative tenths equals x squared. And that new concentration that we had is 0.05. We'll multiply by 0.05 and take uh, the square root. And that gives us a uh, molarity of 5.3 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. Now remember, go back and check and see what X is. X is not hydrogen on this one. X is hydroxide. So you're going to want to come up with the pOH first, which is 5.28. And then subtract that from 14 to come up with your pH, which is 8.72. And this is when we have the addition of 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And also, let's make note, this was at the equivalence point. And look at our pH. We said our pH should be in the basic range because we're adding a strong base, and it is um, 8.72. It is above um, 7. Now, 
let's go screaming past the equivalence point. Let's add in 75 milliliters. So at 75 milliliters of 0.1 molar, um, that gives us um, 7.5 millimoles. of hydroxide. Um, still going to start out the same way. We're still going to start taking our base, combining it with our acid. Gives us our water and our conjugate base. We'll mark that. That's our A minus. That's our HA because we're always looking for aha. Is that potentially possible? Um, so we have 7.5 millimoles of our hydroxide, still using that original 5 millimoles of our weak acid, and we have no conjugate um, present. Um, we're going to subtract by the smallest and add. And so we have 2.5 millimoles of hydroxide left. None of our weak acid and 5 millimoles of our conjugate base. And we have entered an interesting problem. We have two bases left. So this is now the battle of the bases. And in any battle, the strong always wins. So in the battle of the bases, or later on if we see a battle of our acids, the strong always wins. So we can completely ignore our weak because the strong wins. So what we need to do is figure out how much strong base we have left and what is its concentration. Same thing we did before. We'll take our 50 milliliters of acid, 75 milliliters of base, so now it's in 125 milliliters. Um, we take 2.5 and divide it by 125, and we get a molarity of 0 0.020 molar hydroxide. Well, from here, it's just the same old problem. Let's go with our pOH first. Our pOH is 1.70, and our pH is 12.30 at 75 milliliters of hydroxide in. So it went way screaming high um, with our strong additional strong base added into our problem. Now, um, there is one other um, type of problem with a weak acid and a um, strong base that I would um, like um, to show you. Um, it's kind it's different in that um, I'm going to tell you the intervals, but I'm not going to give you volumes associated with it. So let me show you. It's not a particularly hard problem. It's just a different type of problem. Um, so one more example. In this particular case, we're going to have the titration of 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrocyanic acid with 0.1 molars uh, molar sodium hydroxide, and we want to calculate the pH at the following intervals. So I did give you one at 8 milliliters, but then at the halfway point and also at the equivalence point. So these problems um, are going to work slightly differently. So let's start off with the, the first one that we're kind of familiar with um, at 8 milliliters. And the uh, concentration of our ass, uh, of our base, sorry, was 0.1 molar. So that gives us 0.8 millimoles of hydroxide that we're initially adding in. 
Um, let's go ahead and do our um, calculation of our millimoles for our weak acid. We had um, 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar. And that gives us um, 5 millimoles of our weak acid. So we know what we're starting with for our BCA. So let's take our base and combine it with our acid. We'll get our water and our conjugate base. So let's go ahead and mark that. That's our HA over here. We've got our A minus. And set up our BCA chart. Uh, we have 0.8 millimoles of our hydroxide, 5 millimoles of our weak acid, none of our conjugate base. Always change by the smallest, so minus 0.8, minus 0.8, plus 0.8. Uh, so, we've used up all of our strong base. Um, we have um, 4.2 millimoles of our um, conjugate acid remaining, and we have 0.8 millimoles of our conjugate base. So, something's happening here. We've got HA left, and we've got... A minus left, we have, aha, uh -huh. that means a Henderson-Hasselbach um, problem um, is a possibility. Um, let's go ahead and find our new molarities for these. Just like we did before, we're going to add up um, our 8 milliliters of base plus our 50 uh, milliliters of acid for 58. That's going to be the same on both. Um, that gives us a concentration of 0.072 molar for our HA and 0.014 molar for our A minus. Um, so I'm going to use Henderson Hasselbach for this because that's a quick way. Our pH um, equals um, our pKa plus the log of aha. Take the negative log. I had given you the Ka back on that original um, example where I wrote it out. And our A minus is 0.014, and our HA is 0.072. Now, remember I told you before with buffers, take a second and um, write down that pKa that you come up with because it may be useful um, later on. It is... 9.21. Uh, we're going to divide and then take the log, and that gives us negative 0.71. And our pH is equal to 8.50 at... Eight milliliters added in. Our pH equals eight point five zero at eight milliliters of our let's mark that of our strong base added in. Um, so I wanted you to see this one um, a little bit different because I wanted to show you that Henderson Hasselbach is a possibility, and also to show you that in these titrations where there are weak strong combo, because we have this. There is some buffering um, occurring um, in these um, titrations. There is a place in this titration where buffering occurs, so we're a little resistant to our change um, in pH, and that'll be really evident when I show you the titration curve. It's kind of neat. You'll see where it occurs. 
Um, so let's move this on up to try the um, halfway point. And so at the halfway point, you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to be a really hard problem because I don't have any volumes. But remember, in the weak, strong situation, something unique happens at the halfway point. At the halfway point, the HA equals the A minus. So the PH equals the PKA. So, remember why I had you write that PKA down before? Because now you don't even have to do any math to come up with this answer. You just got to go back and look. It's 9.21 at the halfway point to the equivalence point. So, our pH uh, equals 9.21 at halfway point. So, you don't even need anything to do with the volume because we have this kind of nifty little rule um, that applies. So let's figure out um, what happens when we get to the equivalence point. And one of the things we want to remember at the equivalence point, which happens in any kind of titration that we're looking at, The hydrogen has to equal the hydroxide every single time. So we were taking our weak acid and reacting it with our base. And we got water and we got our conjugate base. So here's our HA. Over here's our A minus. Let's start our BCA. And what we know is that from before, from our previous calculation, we had 5 millimoles of our weak acid. Well, because we're at the equivalence point and our hydrogen has to equal our hydroxide, we have 5 millimoles of our hydroxide as well. Now, let's look at that again. We're at the equivalence point. Our hydrogen has to equal our hydroxide. We know how much acid we started with. If we know the acid, then we automatically know the millimoles um, of our base. None of our conjugate base. Same thing. Our change will be minus 5, minus 5, and plus 5. 0, 0, and 5.0 millimoles. So at our equivalence point, all we have left is our A minus. We don't have any of our weak acid or our um, strong base. We only have a weak. Weak means ice. So our next thing to do is we've got to figure out what is the concentration of this weak part. This is where things get a little bit harder because we know that we initially started with 50 milliliters of acid. Uh, how much base did we add? Well, you're going to do a little calculation to figure this out. We know that we had 5 millimoles of base and we also know its concentration. We knew that it was point one molar. Well, if you've got millimoles and molarity, you can come up with milliliters. The liters, oh, let's rephrase that, the milliliters, because we're working in milli here. The milliliters will equal the millimoles divided by the molarity. So we have 5 millimoles divided by 0.1 so that gives us 50 milliliters. So in this type of problem, you actually got to do a little bit of work to come up with that extra volume. So 50 milliliters. Um, so 5 millimoles in 100 milliliters. That gives us a new concentration of 0.05 molar 
um, cyanide, our A minus. So once again, we got that A minus left, our weak base. Our ice is going to have to be based off of a weak base problem. So let's add in a slide here and let's look at that. And as we're doing that, you can go ahead and start writing your equation because you already know that if we have a weak base, all weak bases have to first be reacted with water. So we'll take our cyanide, our A minus, we'll react it with water. That's going to give us our conjugate acid, our HA and hydroxide. This is weak. Weak means ice. Our concentration of our weak base was 0 0.05. 0 and 0 minus x plus x plus x. 0 0.05 minus x, x and x. Now, the other place I want you to be careful, this is a weak base. This is a KB, so watch out for that because that's a common misstep is forgetting whether you're doing a KA or a KB problem. Now, once again, we don't have the KB. We were given the um, KA, but remember, we got this little equation. We can calculate it. Our Ka was 6.2 times 10 to the negative tenth. So we can come up with our Kb, and our Kb in this case is 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, so 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth x squared over 0 0.05, multiply by 0 0.05, um, take the square root, and you get 8.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Now, be careful again. What is your x? Your x is hydroxide. So you're going to find your pOH and then you're going to find your pH. The pOH equals 3.05. Subtract that from 14 and at our equivalence point our pH is 10.95 at our equivalence point where it should be well above 7 because this is a weak acid strong base, we go with the strong for our pH at the equivalence point. So I'm guessing this lecture is running a little bit um, long again, and you're probably getting bored of listening um, to me. So um, I do want to do another example problem, but how about I start this off in class um, next time I see you. That way that'd be a really good um, refresher and um, review. Um, and so when I see you next time in class, please ask me to do a weak base with a strong acid um, titration. It works pretty similarly um, to what we've done here. And we'll also um, make sure you look over the acid base indicators um, slide that's in your PowerPoint. I think it's um, completely filled out for you. Um, so until next time when we do solubility, you'll like it. It's really short. It only has six slides. It'll go a lot faster. <laughs>